You've given a lot of credit publicly to California in terms of this state's response to coronavirus. What is California doing right and what can other states potentially learn from it? I think California acted very early and really got communication out to the public about what they needed to do to protect themselves and protect their families and protect their communities. And I think getting information out early and, and being proactive was really key. I only have one really kind of small complaint is California could improve its public health website because I think it's important for people to have constant information and constant update about how the virus is moving through their communities so they can really see what's happening in a very granular way. So what do you want that to look like? So if you go to the Florida Public Health website, um, they've been very good about creating a dashboard by zip code and by county so that every day people can see what the case county, what their case counts are per county, the hospitalizations, and really understand what's happening at their community level and where they work. I think when you have these kinds of pandemics, it's really critical to both over communicate, but also give people the resources and knowledge to make decisions to protect themselves and others. Uh, let's talk about uh, the issue of something that's happening now at, at USC here in Southern California, which is the look at the antibody test. They've done some research that suggests possibly hundreds of thousands of people have already been infected with COVID-19. What does that research mean to you and what could that potentially do in terms of changing the calculus of when to reopen the country? First, let me thank also California for creating regional laboratory hubs. I think this is really spectacular and is really going to help expand testing. For antibody testing, this is a difficult one because there's it's not 100% sensitive or specific. And so you can get false positives when you test in what we call low incidence, low prevalence areas. So in the White House um, guidelines that we recently put out, we really suggested that you start testing in areas where you think people had greater exposure, first responders, healthcare providers, potentially essentially essential workers where you think the prevalence may be higher and you'll see less false positives. Because if you only have 1% prevalence and a 99% specific test, you can end up with significant numbers of false positives. And so that's really makes the data difficult to interpret. But we're looking forward to these antibody tests done across America with first responders and healthcare providers so that we can really understand both how far this virus went and where, how many asymptomatic cases there are compared to symptomatic cases. The president is suggesting that uh, t immigration should be temporarily shut down. Is that something that you suggested? I work very on the public health side and my information and my data that goes to the president is very much focused on how to work most effectively with states and local governments to carry public health messages and provide guidance. And so we've been very clear that it's important to make sure that virus doesn't come into the country and the president's been very proactive that way. I think that has prevented a lot of new infections within the United States, but now that we have the virus in the United States, we have to really provide clear guidance on how to prevent the spread. And I think that's what we've been doing very, very effectively. So does that mean you think it's a good idea to stop immigration? I really don't have a public health opinion right now. I, I know that this is a, an issue that's broader than the public health value. It also has to do with Americans and Americans' opportunity to work. You know, our unemployment level is extraordinarily high right now, and every American needs a job, and they come out of their, their essentially sheltering in place. And so I think there's many components that go into that decision. I am just the public health piece of that component. And on that point of the, the unemployment issue, we've seen protests here in California where people are angry, they want the government to be reopened. We've seen that around the country. The president has suggested that states should be liberated. Uh, many of these protesters are wearing Trump hats as they do it. What's your message to the protesters? We've been very clear in both the Stop the Spread guidance and the Open Up America guidance that there are criteria that need to be met can be met at the county by county or the state by state level. And that's why I'm also calling for state and local governments to make sure that their information is displayed because the gates are very clear. There's only six of them and you can follow them very carefully. And communities need to be asking their local and state governments 
have they reached those thresholds? Are they testing all of their healthcare workers and their first responders with antibody tests? Have they done these criteria to ensure that they can test for asymptomatics within the really vulnerable groups that we know are in inner cities, among our indigenous population, and among our um, long-term care facilities, and of course within our prisons, we really want a comprehensive public health response to this. And so we've made it also clear in phase one that people need to continue to social distance and need to continue to protect the nursing homes. And so if people want to be out and can continue social distancing as recommended, that is one thing, but we do not want to see people um, not, not following the clear guidance of how to protect themselves and how to protect others in their community. Well, I wish I could talk to you all day, but I know I've got limited time. I always like to ask something fun to wrap things up. So uh, one fun question, you've become a bit of a fashion icon as of late. Uh, the Washington Post even writing about your scarves. What, what do you make of that and sort of the public response to you? I have no idea what to make of that. You know, I grew up as the girl that carried all the slide rules that got the first calculator and was <laughs> always a bit of the nerd. So this is both, I think, shocking to me and very shocking to my two millennial daughters. <laughs> Well, thank you for the work that you're doing to try to keep us safe. We hope that you remain uh, healthy and safe during all of this and best of luck to you doing the important work that you're doing. Thank you. Thank you very much for the time, Dr. Deborah Burks.